Hello and welcome to another video about Projection 3D. In this tutorial, we will study what is camera projection and how to use it. We'll also learn how to make beautiful projections with the help of this great tool. So let's begin, shall we? Now we'll use this image of a very cool looking old car. Gotta love classic cars, right? So press find camera. And first we need to adjust the uh, camera so that it accurately repeats the position of the real camera, as if we were shooting a car. Now we can do that with helper grid. Let's scale it to 500. Adjust carefully so that the grid lines correctly cover the floor and backside of the picture, like so. Okay, the camera's ready. Now to improve projection quality, select both layers, go to render options and change shadow map resolution to 4000. Create projection. Now at this point we need to decide how many copies we need. Press pre-compose and set the number of copies to three. Okay, so we have three copies now. Now you may be wondering why there are three copies, right? But hold that thought, we'll return to this later. Now double click on the first copy of projection scene, then show hidden layers. So now just try to think how the camera projection works. To create a projection, we need three basic things. A camera, which is our eyes, a light source, which is our projector, and finally the projected image. And on what the image will be projected. We must create it ourselves. So what do we have here? So this is the image that will be projected. This is a light source, projector, and our eyes, the camera. The other three are additional layers. Now, original image lets us see what's happening in the scene. It is necessary that we see the object that we want to model. This camera will allow us to animate the scene since we cannot touch the projector camera. And as we already know, the helper grid allows us to adjust the projector camera's position. The camera that we have to animate is attached with this camera on the main composition. We have three projection copies, but we can animate the cameras in each copy separately. So therefore, all cameras from each projection copy that we have to animate are attached to this camera. And animating this camera, we animate all cameras simultaneously. In fact, we need all this information only for a deep understanding of how the camera projection works. But to work in Projection 3D, you don't need to know all of this, because as you can see, we've created three ready-made projection scenes and one animated camera with just two clicks. Projection 3D does all this work for you. It creates a ready-made projection, hides all layers, and it makes your workflow go much faster. Now you see an empty composition and you only need to create a surface on which your image will be projected. Well, now that you already know how camera projection works, let's create surfaces for the car, the floor, and backside. So double click on projection scene three. Now use create solid using helper grid properties option to create the floor and the background. Now, as you see, we've created 3D solids with the same position of the grid. Move the camera to make sure everything is done correctly. Yes, looks like everything's correct. We've created the floor and the background, but as you can see, the car was also projected on the floor. We wouldn't need that. We just need a clean environment separate from the car, because during animation, a part of the environment behind the car may appear. And so now we go back to the question, why do we need several projection copies? So that is to separate the car and the environment. Then we'd be able to remove the car from the image in Photoshop, save it as a separate file, and replace the projected image in the scene with that file. And that will allow us to have a, a clean image without a car. Now let's go on and create a surface for the car. Double click projection scene one. Create a ground plane. This object will help us generate position of the car. Go to Effect Control tab and duplicate Generate Position. Now, using two controllers, we can find the position of the car in the scene. Let's generate position of both front and rear wheels. Great. Now, select both controllers, go to Tool menu, and choose Generate Planes from Points. Hello. 
As you can see, we've created a plane that copies the position of the car side. Now for draw mask, we can get the outline of the side of the car. So let's do that. Close the layer eyeball to work faster. Now let's change color to see the mask better. Okay, we did it. And now that we have the side part, we can extrude it and get a 3D model of the car. So open extrude tool, set depth, mark front face and back face and click create surface. Oops, extruded in the wrong direction. I guess I better change direction and reduce the depth size. Great, that's what we wanted. So now we have a 3D model of the car. Let's go to the main composition and move the camera. See, the car is projected not only in the model, but also on the floor and on the backside. Now, if, if you do all the work in one scene, it will look like the end result. So therefore we need some projection copies. Okay, let's animate the camera. Pre-render. Good, but there's some mistakes. The spoiler and the front lights disappear. So I need to modify the mask a little and extrude again. like so. And also here. Great, now everything is fine. Let's make a car layer, a solo layer. Now remove the helper object, we don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is our car model. Doesn't look too good yet, but we'll fix it. Let's change the camera angle a little. Good. Now it's time to open Photoshop and erase the car from the picture. Using lasso tool, select the car. Now go to Edit Fill, make sure Content Aware is selected and click OK. Now let's use Clone Stamp tool to fix it.
Okay, that's enough. Let's save the picture. Return to our After Effects and replace projection image of projection scene 3. Now we have a background environment and the car all separate from each other. Let's make a pre-render. Now everything is in place and nothing disappears. Okay, so now take a pen tool and start masking out places you don't need. Now in most cases you can do without masks, but sometimes when the model's complex, you still have to use the masks. Now let's animate it. Okay, we did it. Now change the mask mode. Increase mask feather. Great, this is what we want. Now for the front part. Okay, it's done. Now if you want, you can blur sharp edges. Go to Utilities menu and choose Blur Edges. Perfect. Now pre-render. As you can see, during animation, this white area is shown where the image was not projected. Now we need to draw this area in Photoshop via Clone Stamp tool. Go to Image, Canvas Size, and increase the image size horizontally. 
Okay, now draw the missing area. Save the image and go to After Effects. Okay, so the missing area appeared now, but not entirely. Now we need to go back to Photoshop and finish that. Okay, now everything looks great. We can now render our project and see the result. At the beginning of this tutorial, we created three projection copies, but we only use two. Now we'll use the third copy to add objects to the scene. For example, a road sign. So double click projection scene two and create ground plane as a helper. Generate position for the sign. Go to File menu and choose Import Image Footage. Select Sign Image and click OK. As you can see, the image was imported and placed directly to the generated position. Now let's just scale it and maybe rotate it a little bit. OK, that's all. Enjoy the view. Now you can move it in whichever direction you want because it's a separate object. Okay, that's all. Let's move on to the next example. In this instance, I will show you how to animate this boring static video. We'll add a smooth camera movement. So import a video footage and find camera position. Okay, now create projection. Since in this case, we don't have any objects in the foreground, one copy is quite enough. Now double click on projection scene one and using helper grid properties, create surfaces for the sea and sky. Good. Now animate the camera. To get the dog in the frame, let's move forward on the timeline and create animation keys. Like so. Now move the camera slowly. Okay, that's enough. Okay, animation's now ready. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope it was useful for you and that now you know how to create beautiful projections. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.